everybody. Welcome into the PM and the AM show. I'm your host, Pat Penar. Long time, my man, Mike Lauer, of course, Al Safiri, producing the program today. Hi. Good morning, fellas. Program. Uh, well, welcome, welcome to the Mayfair program. <laughs> program. Well, listen, I, I, I can't. We call that the Mayfair marbles. <laughs> Or mumbles, whatever comes out of his mouth. Or what comes out in whatever inserts. Uh, but listen, yeah, I right away, I, right away. You know what? Let's get, let's get right into it because there was a lot of Philadelphia sports action, of course, last night. Uh, the Philadelphia Union bounced back into the win com Finally, it, it, it was a little rough. The Philadelphia Wings just continue, continually can't find a W at home. They are like one and five at home. But however, we're not here to talk about them. We are here to talk about. The red hot Flyers because they got me red and hot right now because they are playing great, great hockey. And Mike, for the first time in a long time, the atmosphere at the Wells Fargo Center for a Flyers game feels like playoff hockey. Yeah, yeah, it was live. It was rocking. Um, I'll tell you what, man, this team, um, you know, me and Maddie did the uh, show on – Thursday, I believe. Or yeah. no, Tuesday. It was. Tuesday, you guys Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. Um, you know, with the Leafs. And I said jokingly to Matty, I said, oh, I said, they're gonna go three and oh or four and oh this week. You know, just joking, but the way they've played these games, um, I think it shows a, a lot of character in this team, man. They have fought and these are top teams that they're playing now. You figure they they beat Toronto, they they got another point. You know, Thursday in Carolina, which they could have won that game. And then they come back yesterday and they beat a very good Boston team yesterday, which, by the way, they haven't won since 2021 here. And I think it's you can go back. I think it's 20 games now that they haven't won in Boston. So for them to go and beat that team yesterday um, really says something. And they held their two main guys off of the off of the stat sheet. You know, Pasternak Mm -hmm. really. I mean, my my. I don't know if I think the one o'clock thing might have got to him or something because oh, I don't hear that shit. Everybody played at one o'clock. Listen, my man, listen, Pasternak was missing everything. I mean, he wasn't, he couldn't hit a barn yesterday. And Marshawn, I mean, I, I'll give kudos, man. Uh, the Flyers got under his skin yesterday, and it was for the first time they, you know, usually he's the type of guy that gets under our skin where we want to run around, we want to kill him. You know what I mean? Because he's just that type of player. Well, put it this way: all here's your stat line for Marshawn, right? Two two minutes in the penalty box, one shot on goal, and two hits. Right, that's it. Right, and now I'm saying Marshawn's the type of guy that gets under your skin, and like you. Pasternak was even worse. He had he had one shot on goal. Yeah, because he was missing the net. Like my man, I'm telling you, he was so off yesterday. Um, same thing with uh, Charlie McAvoy. Even though McAvoy, I will give him this, man. He was uh he was able to. Uh, maneuver that back end a little bit for the for the Bruins. Um, he's their guy. So for them to get a win over that team is really good. And yo, they got a short turnaround. You know, tonight they got the Panthers coming in. Panthers are coming off a late game. Game went to overtime last night. So yeah, the Panthers got a much needed point. Um, but now they're tied with the Rangers. So well, there's like a big three way tie going, like or, or you know within like a point or so of the top spot in the East. Well, again, you, you know, we, we talked about – you talked about this week with Matt. Well, me and Al looked at it on Thursday when we did the post game show, and I said to Al, I said, if they could take five points away from this tough stretch, I'll be impressed. And they did. Very did. And That's they, what we, we talked about yeah. yesterday. I brought it up to him on the uh, uh, post game show for this Bruins game, and I said to him, like, d- despite what happens today – yeah, they, they, they've they've done much better than we all expected them to do. Right, like you were saying, I said this could have been simply an zero and four, four right? And, and run, and I guarantee and don't you, they had the Rangers Tuesday night. Yeah, so I mean, so this is just the, this week. There's a whole gauntlet still going. I mean, you're looking at seven days, dude. In seven days, they played the Maple Leafs, the Hurricanes, the Bruins, the Panthers, and the Rangers. <laughs> that's, that's a hell of a gauntlet. And if they only lose one game out of that, uh, you know, you, you shocked the world. Right, and, and, and like I said. You stole a W from this Boston team, who that Boston team's had your number. But again, the atmosphere has changed in the Wells Fargo Center, and the Flyers are feeding all the fans right now. And they played a tremendous game yesterday. Travis Konechny gets a power play goal. Uh, with the, again, the the person's kind of got the Flyers numbers at Charlie Cordell. Uh, again, he makes that nice pass to Justin 
Brazo and uh, if I'm I don't Brazo, Brazo, and you know again uh, through Brazo. double, <laughs> through double, you know through double coverage, he makes a nice goal. Uh, Morgan Foros with a drop pass to Travis Konechny for the second goal. That and, was uh, I'll tell you what, yeah. that goal to me, that kind of summed up the game mm-hmm. yesterday with me. You know the Flyers just started putting the puck on the net. I yes. mean, once they started doing that. Like, they started getting the results that they needed. Good things happen. Right. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I got a little frustrated watching them yesterday on one of the power plays. They just kept everything to the outside. And I'm like, what are you doing? Shoot the puck. Mm-hmm. And it was getting frustrating as I was watching this. But as soon as they started doing that, um, you know, it, it, you know, good things started happening. And as far as the um, uh, Brugeau uh, goal, the back goal, yeah, I'll tell you what, that was a good play by Charlie Coyle. Yeah. I was saying that to Al yesterday. Al didn't want to hear it because, you know, it's a Boston thing, you know. <laughs> but Who Boston sucks. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, it was. It, it was a really good. And uh, I'll tell you what, that second goal, like I said, Konechny, to me, he just put it on net, and he got, and he got it under the pad. You're right, and he records his 30th goal. I mean, again, just – Kind of be on pace where he was at last year. Then you had the Ryan Pulling finding uh, Tyson Foster, and Tyson Foster just hits that. He just snipes oh. one in there. And of course, you see the stats from yesterday: the Flyers out shooting the out shooting the uh, the Bruins twenty nine to twenty block well, shots. But that's the only thing is I, I, I we did this on the show. Like if you look at those numbers, the most deceiving part is if you watch that game and you're like, Boston was... I want to see if I like hockey or not. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm dipping my toe in the hockey pond over yeah. here. You, if you watch the first two periods, periods you'd be like, this is boring. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. And they both had 13 shots on goal in the first two periods. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it was that last period that really jumps out. When you can keep a team like the Bruins to seven or less shots on goal per period, per, per period it's a good day. It is a, a good, good day. day. And, and, right. and, and you got to tip your hat, too, Sam Harrison, first two periods. Oh, he's had some First two periods same. and a half. Like, first two and a half periods, that kid was money. That yeah. kid was money. He made uh, the two saves he made on JVR in that second period was unbelievable, man. What's tip, up, Eric? Tip What's up, Eric? hit 30, I think. Uh, Eric, yeah, I mean, um, Konechny hit 29 and 30 yesterday. He has the same stat line as of yesterday as he had all of last year. They still have about, what, 12, 11 games left. So right. that's that's pretty cool. I mean, that's, that's – what do we say going into this this, this year? We wanted to see growth. We want to see growth, growth and everything, and we've seen that already. I mean, I'm not saying be happy that you roll it up, be happy, but not expect any more well, for them. But this is what we wanted. And, we're and listen, too, like the one thing we wanted to see, too, was this nucleus being formed. You're seeing it right before our eyes. And I, the yeah. one thing I'm taking away from this season is there's always two guys right now that are, you know, there's always two guys right now on the Flyers that have been staying hot. This has been the story all year. When what's up, Owen, Jim? What's up, Jim? When Owen, when Owen Tippett and Morgan Frost, when they were just carrying this team two weeks ago, and when it starts to tail off from them, two other guys are picking it up. Now Forrester's picking it back up now with with Konechny. If Konechny gets going, he's the type of dude that get he can he gets on a, a long streak. And it looks like Coots is going to yeah. take some time to earn his. Way yeah, well, here. I'm about to get in. Jim, well, we're going to talk Sixers in a while. Uh, stay tuned for that. But he's called, he's uh, chiming in from Delray Beach. Why is all the people we talk to coming from beaches and yes. Bahamas? And I know, right? They send us a drink with an we're, umbrella. We're, yeah, we're in pictures. chilly Philly right now. Yeah. I mean, like, come on, uh, But anyway, you know what? You bring up an interesting point, Al, and I want to get into it. Again, a lot of people have been on both sides of the fence on that. You know, I've been hearing all week about, you know, why or he should have or should not have benched, you know, Coots. And to me, I'm like, listen, I'm all in on, on Torella. And I think it's the right move. The guy is not producing whether, and listen, no one's above the bench. He's a true Mark Ward. No one's above the bench, whether you're the captain, the leader. So, listen, he's looking at X and O's. The, the young guns of this team is producing. The formations are right. The, the, uh, the quick passes and all that stuff. Again, the reason why you gave – Toronto a runs because you or beat them this week. It's because you have the young guns in there. You don't have Mark Stahl around. You don't, you know, again, uh, uh Isaac Coots. I'll say Mark Stahl. Matty B will arise from his pocket. <laughs> uh, again, I don't blame him. You, you, you took it down to the wire in Rally, North Carolina with the Hurricanes. You know, it just lost by a point. And now yesterday, you're bringing Coots back in the lineup. He knows he's got to be better. Um, and, and so, 
you know, it's something Don Torello wants to do right now. So again, Listen, all Torello did was, uh, you know, he put the dog in in the room, you know, kind of gave it a couple of little slaps, put it in the room, didn't feed it. Because what do you say to him? You know where this is going to go. I right? probably, but anyway, I'm beating your schnauzer in front of Pat. Yeah, uh, oh, but sounds like a good Sunday afternoon. Yeah, but I mean, if you look at the way uh, Coots played yesterday, my man was playing like. He he had his butt on fire, man. He was a little chippy. Um, he was really finishing Vortex. He was getting in. I mean, he was hustling yesterday, man. I saw a different side of Coots. And you know what? Maybe he needed that. I mean, sometimes you get complacent in being like he was named captain. He was complacent. And his play was complacent. Sometimes you need to do that to shake things up. I didn't have a problem with him making him a Same. healthy scratch. Because if you're not doing – if I wasn't doing my job, Okay, and you're not doing your job. Okay, we have a boss to answer to, and the boss is going to be like, "All right, well, if you ain't going to be able to do it, I got to put somebody here that can do it." Exactly, and I totally agree. Like people are getting upset, and I get it. He's been here; he's the longest tenor flyer, and that, that whole story. That don't mean nothing, man. But look, no one's above the bench. And so when I was talking with Jordan Hall yesterday up in the press box, and I said, well, "You know, what was your take on it?" It's like, listen, you know, he thinks you know, Coral uh, likes to play mind games with you know. With their with his team and wants to make sure, yeah, listen, I can pull you. Make sure you, you know, trying to get, you know, trying to wake you up a little bit, maybe. So uh, um, obviously, it's worked because look what happened with Bobby Brink. Bobby Brink was all over the ice yesterday. He hit that line didn't show up on the score sheet, but God, did they have a good game? Bobby Brink was I like I can count probably at least three times yesterday. He was in the corner, outnumbered. By Bruins, and you know, and was still sitting there fighting with the puck. Right. So Eric checking into the show. He says, "Can't wait for the draft next season. The sky's the limit. Looking forward to see this team with the, you know handling the playoffs." For my, uh, for us, my opinion has earned another season for the with the Flyers. I think so. Why I mean, is everybody so quick to get rid of Morgan Frost? I, you know, I'm with you. I, why is he why? become? Why is he become the whipping boy? All yeah, of a sudden? he's not. Like I'm. So uh oh, speaking about and, waking up from the coffin. What's my, up, Ant? Oh, uh, the home foreman checking in. What's, What's up? up, Jamie? Excuse me. Coach played how he started the season off. Looked good. He was everywhere. He was yesterday. He really was. Now we need him to sit there. Coots got lazy. You know what? That's and, what got him benched. And that's what got him benched. You know what? Uh, that's a good thing. But I want to get back to that that line yesterday. Oh, I, I think it was Brink, Lawton, and uh, I'm trying to remember who was on the other side of that. Uh, but anyway. It was the Lawton Brinks line. They were all over the place. Right. They were all over the place. Um, you know, the new defenseman, I'm drawing a blank on his name here. Uh, Eric Johnson. Eric Johnson was yeah. making plays yesterday. That play he made from his knees was unreal. Almost scored a goal. I, I make horrible plays from my knees, no, too. No, you don't. <laughs> but <laughs> quit lying to people. Oh, Jesus. Mary but no, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, he's a good defenseman. You know what I mean? Kind of making up for the production of Nick Sealer. Trying to, you know, again, take those shots. And like you said, hold dive all over the place trying to make a big fly. Cam York, we got to we gotta put extra padding on him or something just so he can make it to the end of the play. My man has been, <laughs> oh, my <laughs> God. Like, I, every time there's a slap shot towards that young guy, I cringe because he's just been, he's taking, like, if there's anybody who needs time in a jacuzzi, Pat, it, it, oh. Cam York. Yeah. I mean, my man, when this season ends, he's going to be in there for a month. What are you trying to say? He's like, <laughs> like the Tin Man over there, all rusted up. But uh, Eric says Frost is now towards his favorite son. Yeah, well, Torch definitely. If, if, I, I think in his household, he does pick favorite kids, and it will he change. Does. He will bench his child if he had to. Like, yeah, you, know what? you can clean your room. I don't like your face no more. You're benched. Yeah, I mean, hey, look, listen. Um, this dude has gotten to, you know, this yeah. dude's gotten to a, a cup final with two different teams. Yeah, I, I mean, if you look at it, he's won a couple. He won a couple of the Lightning, took the Rangers to a Stanley Cup. So obviously, the guy knows how to get there. I mean, and he took a below average. Um, like, don't think too hard. Yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to. Yeah, dude, trust to, me, I'll not on to, that one. I'll have to clean the seats. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll take that for what it is. <laughs> yes, yes. But I mean, he, he took a very average you know, Columbus Blue Jacket team to the Eastern Conference Finals. So the guy knows what he's doing on how to get the right, I guess, the right. He pushed all the right buttons. He pushed, yeah, right. Yeah, well, I mean, like, listen, I 
Torch is the kind of guy, if you needed tickets, you want to go to sherrystickets.com because oh, all the yeah. right buttons to push. That's right. Go to sherrystickets.com for great prices. No hidden fees. You're not going to get bamboozled. He won't bench you for this because it's the right move to make. No hidden fees. Sports, concerts, you name it. Great prices and an additional 10% off using that great promo code. EOP10. That's right. EOP10 will save you 10% off at sherrystickets.com. Sherrystickets.com. Sports, concerts, theater, you name it. Forget the other guys. You're going to go to check out on it. Wonder why there's an additional 40 or $50 fee. You're not going to get that at sherrystickets.com. Family owned and operated since 1946. Sports, concerts, theaters, you name it. They got it. And they save an additional 10% off using that great promo code. EOP10. That's right. EOP10 will save you off. Save you 10% off. At cherrystickets.com. All right, guys. Listen, the, the Flyers talk is getting hot and heated. And, uh, I mean, listen, to, uh, for everyone out there, what was your take o- o- on the bench of Sean Couture? We want to hear about And, guys, does this win over the Bruins speak volumes to that Eastern Conference right now? I mean, Al, I'll go to you. How do you feel? Is this speaking volumes a little bit to that Eastern Conference and say, hey, look out for us? Yeah, but more now into the future, not as much. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't mean anything this year. It means anybody's going to go up against us. Let's just talk this year for a moment. Anybody's going to go up against us now. We're in playoff mode. You better be in playoff mode. Yeah. Okay? Uh, we're not going to roll over very easily. Um, and if you do see us in the playoffs, the next round you play, you're going to be limping into it. That's what you're showing me. And the ultimate showing here, here is, here is the future. Right. We are the future, and we're just getting so. This is just... Ground floor, first couple floors, whatever you want to say. We're not, we haven't hit the top of this high rise yet. So there's a lot of key players that aren't here yet. And there's a lot of key players we don't even know exist that'll be on this Flyers team. Yeah. Yet. So it's going to be a bumpy ride for anybody who comes against us. And we're, 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 we're laying the gauntlet down. You're, okay, Boston, we haven't beat you since 2021. Well, guess what we did? We broke that. You know what? Next time we come to Boston, we're gonna get a, we're gonna get a W up in there. We're gonna go up there, Bean Town, and smash the Bean Town up a little bit. Oh, uh, smash the Bean Town, and right like you said, Al, we're going right into the penthouse. We are on our way there, bud. Uh, Eric, Eric said, Coots needed reset. He's played tons of minutes for someone who hasn't played in eleven. Played eleven slash two. Eleven twenty. Oh, oh, this is November second. Yeah, November second. Uh, year years his body needs time. Um, it's yeah. Listen, it does. It's, it's, a, it's a point, but. I don't think you bench somebody because they're tired. No. I think you might cut their minutes down. I think he saw something in an attitude that he's seen. And I'm not going to say you're – it's hard to uh, – I can see why people would choose either side, agree or disagree with the benching of Coots. He's your captain. So, in it, as torts, it shows you that nobody's above the benching, which is a good thing. But as the captain, does that hurt you leading your guys? Like, if you slap your general, you know, if the president slaps the general in the face and then tells him to go lead the army, does that make things more difficult? Well, I mean, I don't know, because I don't want to say in, in different sports, it, it could be something like, for instance, if, if just say uh, Jason Kelsey, right? You know, he's letting just, you know, guys get by him and, and you know, just wind up popping, you know, would he have to say, you know, whatever? So, I mean, I get it. He's one of the love, you know, athletes in this town is, is Coots. And everybody loves him. And everyone's happy to see him see it. And it's good to see. But, again, that goes to show you, I mean, that C really doesn't mean nothing to Torts. And it's, it obviously didn't mean nothing. But, but is that a problem? No. Is it a problem that that C means nothing to the coach? No. I disagree. Why? I'm not disagreeing with the benching of Coots. If he needed it, he needed it. I got to I right. gotta, I gotta know the guy who's. The bench minder, you know, the, the manager, the coach is going to be the one who has to make that decision. But it does from an overall outlook. If you're telling me the C means, if, if you're telling me that he can bench anybody, even the C like that, then either the C was having a big problem, the captain, or it's if he doesn't mean the C means much, then why? What's the point of having? Well, I guess, you know, listen, he didn't have one all of last year. Right. So that's why I said I don't think it means much because he didn't have one last year. And I think I think that's that old Brawl Street or just that old hockey man tally. We need a captain and all those things. And it's just like he get, we don't need it right now. Like he wants to change the culture. That's the, that's his whole purpose. And he was himself, whether I'm here this year, next year or whatever. But I might not be here for the long term, but I'm going to change the culture in that that locker room. It's just so. Again, it's Wall Street bully brewing. So, 
Um, but I, I like the moves that the Philadelphia Flyers have made. Again, just it, it been on a real hot stretch. Um, and like I said, tonight, the Philadelphia Flyers, if you guys aren't have no plans, go to sharedtickets.com. Sign, you know, get yourself a nice little discount, EOP discount. And, of course, check out Flyers and Panthers. Mike, who do you have winning this one? Did the Flyers? I think they break the brooms out. They sweep them. Really? Yeah, we're going for the season sweep. I think uh, Flyers are hot, and, you know, Florida's kind of reeling a little bit. Now, you got to figure, they didn't, the game's going to be tonight, but you figure they didn't get into town till probably, <coughs> what? They probably didn't get into town till probably 2, 3 o'clock this morning. So they didn't get in their hotel rooms till like 3 o'clock this morning. Right. Okay. So you figure they're probably going to be up about maybe, they're probably going to have to get up or probably around noon or whatever to start, you know, go do their morning skates or whatever down at the Wells Fargo. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, they're going to be a little out of sorts. Plus, they just played last night and they went to overtime. So, that, and they played a very brutal game against the Rangers. I don't know how much they're going to have left. The Flyers are riding a wave of emotion coming in. So uh, I like the Flyers' chances, man. They're at home. I love I love Marshawn. He always makes me laugh. Even when I'm a bad guy, <laughs> this man can make me laugh. Yes, what's up, Marshawn? C equals crumble. Yes. Yes, um, exactly. So you must be talking about the Sixers. Yeah. Woohoo! hoo But, uh, what, again, I, I love what I saw. From Flyers, I think tonight I, I'm with you. I just like I told Jordan Hall yesterday. I think they own real estate now in this Flyer Panthers head. Um, they're at least they're. I don't know. I mean, if you think about it, put it this way: if um, they 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 couldn't beat Toronto, they beat Toronto. They couldn't beat Boston, they beat Boston. So they've beaten. Florida this whole time wouldn't it be if you're you're sticking with that trend. Man, yeah, yeah but, well, listen, they, they could let it in, but again, I. To Mike's point, I think with the fatigue with, with them going overtime, facing that tough, tough Rangers team, now all of a sudden you have to you know make the ride down on the bus. Like you said, now you have to try and get ready for morning skates, try and wake yourself up. Again, the the Rangers, I mean the Panthers are on a four game losing streak, so they're gonna they might be playing in desperation mode right now. They might want to come out with a little you know. It all depends. Punch. It all depends. Like the Flyers got to survive the first five minutes. Yeah, I, mean, I, I if they can survive the first five minutes of this game, I, I think they're going to be just fine. Yeah, I mean, like I said, they're starting to lose a bundle right now. So, well, they lost the overall lead. You know what I mean? But I mean, they lost to the Rangers, they lost to the uh, Predators, they lost to the Lightning, lost to the Hurricanes, and then today that Lightning game they got smoked. Yeah, they got hammered in that Lightning game. Five, three, well, they got hammered by the Hurricanes too, losing four nothing. Yeah, and so, then they got they got hammered by the Predators too, losing three nothing. So again, the I don't know. This might they might have to push the alarm. It'll come out with a, a take, you know, TKO punch. But again, as of as of right now, as we speak right now, this morning, the Rangers hold the top spot in the East at ninety eight right. points. It's, they're at ninety eight. Boston's at ninety seven. But I, I'm going to go with you, Mike. I'm You're gonna, welcome, I'm, Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be like you know. I'm going to work on the orange and black sunglasses. I think the Flyers are going to take one tonight. I think, like you said, it just rides. We call this the old Mayfair Mambo. Watch, yes, watch yes. Them change, guys. Yes, I'm going to ride the wave right now. I think the Flyers are just going to come Man, out. you've been riding in, in, in a whirlpool. Met, have you guys met Mr. The Wave yet? <laughs> Patty <laughs> B is in the house. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm serious. I, I think the Flyers are going to do good tonight. I think it's going to be a 4-2 a to two win Flyers. How about that? I think. Uh, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. It just said a little while ago, got to go have a football meeting, right? Right. He couldn't help himself. Jumped back on. Flyers making playoffs and Pat the Pence. Man. <laughs> Quiet, angry Anthony. Uh, I love awesome. him. I love Ant. I guarantee you, my over under, I'm going to be on five shows a I guarantee it. Five? I have five shows today. He'll be today. divorced by tomorrow. Yes. Wait, 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 wait. You're on this one. I know we're, we're recording yes. the Phillies one later. Yes. You, you... Sixers post, Flyers post, wing, uh, all across the time. We got to talk off air. Yeah, <laughs> listen, I'm I'm like 007 around here. Bugs Bunny. Yeah, may, maybe take one off. Can't do that, sir. Uh, but anyway, Bugs like I said, Bunny. I, I might bench him. <laughs> you might have to. <laughs> might have to. It's too good for his own good. Yeah. So, like I said, the, the Flyers. I think. I don't know. I think this is going to be an Owen Tippett day. I I, I agree. I think it's Owen Tippett, Morgan Frost. Yeah, I, I, they're, I, it's a, they're, they're kind of safe vets right now. They have been playing some of the best hockey. Of all you know what? Right I'm gonna also call Bobby Brink's gonna get one too. I think Bobby Brink is playing think, great defense. Yeah, his his numbers ain't coming up on the stats as much, but he he is definitely Scott Lawton's been vulturing all his goals. Yeah, 
Yeah, right. I mean, it's like all his work. And, and then just just clean it up. Yep, cleans it up and gets the goals. So now, again, the Flyers are ahead of schedule. If we're looking close to playoff time, who do you want in the first round? Hmm. I mean, if you're looking at this. Anyone but Tampa. I'll take anyone but Tampa right now. Or the Rangers. Flyers haven't played well against let, the Rangers let, either. Yeah, well, let the Rangers run out of fuel. I mean, if you're looking at it right now, um, it would be. I'm telling you, what a story. The year that the Flyers' names We're come in the off third the cup. the spot on the Metro, on so that means we would. Right now, for down to today, it would be. It would be us at the sixth spot. So that means we'll be taking on. Florida, right? Yeah. Yep. We take on the Panthers right now. Panther, give me play, Panther. You know what, the one I don't like about that is like you sweep a team even as good as the Panthers. And then the playoffs, playoffs. Yeah. different animal. They're just they are yeah. a different animal in yeah. playoff time. But I mean, I mean you're gonna be seeing Boston, Florida, or Toronto most likely. Or, or I'm sorry. Boston, you're gonna probably see either Boston, Florida, or New York. Or, or New Carolina. York or Carolina. It could be a swing either way, because it's only about the lowest is 95. The other one is 98. There's three points between the four teams. So. And really, Toronto's not that far behind them either. Toronto's only seven points behind. All right. Well, Al, what's your final prediction for today? Pain. Yes. Yeah. Um, like I said, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. This is a tough game. It's a tough game. I, I think I think some of the points that you've made, I hate saying this, makes sense. Yes. Um, and Mike, Mike's, Mike's points more make sense. But, like, you know, you got, you got a team that had to go to OT last night. Team that had to travel here, right? Uh, and now they got to play. You know, then they got to play on a much shorter rest than the Flyers get. I mean, both teams had to play the day before, but the Flyers had a pretty much a whole day, of, a half a day of extra rest than they did. Mm-hmm. And it's home ice advantage. I think it's going to be a good game. It's just I'm going with the trend. I'm going to think they're going to lose, but it's going to be a good game. You think they're going to lose? Yeah. Listen, I would love to be wrong in this case because it would be what what a. Yeah, you know, just what would it look like? I'm writing the article today. I already have ideas. If they win today, and just talking about the whole last four games overall, does you know kind of put a stamp of you know here we come? Maybe that'll be the Flyers' next you know next year's slogan. You know, have a new slogan every year. Yeah. Hashtag here we come. You know, or hashtag watch your ass. Oh, you know, like something like that. Which I like that last one. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, listen, guys. Go Flyers, but right now we're going to transition to some 76er talk. And I know... But, 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 but. but, Oh, we like butts. You know what? I I feel costed. So I'm calling David R. Cherry on that one. Cherryinjurylaw.com. Works for Scott Motor Vehicle Personal Injury. Criminal Law. That's right. 610-565-0300. Cherryinjurylaw.com. Call David R. Cherry for all your legal needs. Workers' Comp, Motor Vehicle, Personal Injury, and Criminal Law. David R. Cherry is the man with the plan. Call him at 610-565-0300 or simply visit cherryinjurylaw.com. Now, <clears throat> real quick, guys, the schedule is out for next week already, so here's a little quick glimpse at it. We'll talk about that at the end of the show. Um, but uh, real, I also want to, I need to tell you guys about our newest sponsor for the Fightings Final because the Fightings Final starts Thursday, right? <laughs> Old new season, the Fightings Final, season three, right? Uh, so... What well, that's why you're doing is talking about the new street light kitchen and bar at 5400 Fern Boulevard, Drexel Hill, PA 19026, the Holiday Inn Suites at the Drexel Book Event Center. That's right, we will be there live April 7th from uh, starting at 11 a.m. for a pre and post Phillies game. That's right, they take on the Nationals that day, but they are also are they're going to be you're going to be hearing about them a lot at the finals final because they are our new sponsors for the entire, entire season of this year's fighting final. So Check it out. Go to Street Light Kitchen and Bar, 5400 Fern Boulevard in Drexel, a Holiday Inn Suites at the Drexel Brook Event Center. Check it out. Um, and we will be uh, giving you guys more info. I'm this. looking forward to that, man. Yeah. New spot to go to. Hopefully you don't embarrass us. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> now you're asking for too much. <laughs> yeah, one at a time, please. Yeah, like, come on, man. I say you, says you never. Um, <laughs> I mean, God. I, I'm not that embarrassed. We're not. <laughs> <laughs> Never said that to a pack of hot dogs. Yeah. Just going to walk in there first thing. What's, how big's your sausage? <laughs> I like it thick and girthy. So, sure. is, so this is all you can eat, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But uh, listen, the 76ers on the West Coast. Now, we talked about one head coach. I want to talk about the other. 
And I know at the beginning, my man. Marshawn, tell me to relax. Watch your ass. I don't know. Tell me I'm wrong, Marshawn. Like, I mean, this this team right now is get is young and and they're coming at your face. And you know, wait, what? Watch your ass. Like we're 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 coming from behind, and it's gonna you know, sub. You watch yourself. Uh, Ah, come from behind, watch your ass, and I'm coming in your face. What town are we on? Uh, but. Both you need you. He's getting benched. He's getting benched. It's gonna happen. Benching Pat. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah. I, now you see what I got to work with, people. Yeah. The 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 seventy sixers though. Again, I want to talk about this head coach because it's been bothering me some about Nick Nurse, and I know my man dies. We was throwing the rose petals at his feet once he got the hire, but um, I'm starting to see some things I'm not liking. I'm not liking the fact that his rotation. Needs to make some. I don't know the love for KJ, you know, Martin, but Jesus, can we get some Ricky Council in there? Can we get some, you know, uh, can you expand the, you know, his rotation? Please, please. It's, wait, 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 wait. So Nick Nurse's fault because they have a G League squad up there right now for the most part. No, Dude, but everybody's hurt. What do you want them to do? Uh, I mean, but like, Ricky Council like, can play. And I mean, if Nick Nurse could lace up his shoes, he'd probably go out there and try to play. Like this is play. the this is the thing that kills me with these with you Sixer fans. Okay, you so what are you? Like, so play. wait, are you a Laker fan? No, I'm not a Laker. Why fan. would you say use? Because I I'm honest. Wait. I really don't watch the Sixers like that. I really don't. I tune in. I do it for this job. But right. What I'm saying to you is this, when I say you six are fans, because you guys get on nuts and get on, oh, my God, I don't like what – what do you want him to do? He does, he's got a G League roster, like Al says. Everybody's hurt. What do you want him to do? You guys want him to take a turn. So wait, if you barely, Time out. Yeah, you yeah. want him to take a turn and polish it and turn it into a gold nugget. It's hard to do. So, wait, so why why would you even voice it of pain if you barely watch the stuff? I mean, the, the thing is, if KJ Moore doesn't give you no productivity and Ricky Castle can give you a productivity and you're trying to salvage your season a little bit. A but little you're bit. making it sound like, Pat, you're making it sound like the guy's kind of like, I don't know, like uh, he he's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, like, like he's not trying. Like he's not trying. Well, this guy can play. How you know? Again, it could be analytical. It could be, hey, maybe this guy matches up better with this against this team. That's all I'm saying. No, I like, get you, but I mean, this. There's other ways. You, I'm just under. Try, I'm trying to understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the time. That's Mark. all the time. Sweet I gotta set his butt never. straight. Yes. Well, it's never gonna be straight. No, never, <laughs> never. <laughs> it's got some turns on it. But uh, listen, that's what I'm talking about. DV. The 76ers really need to, you know, like I said, there's ways you can justify your bench, and he just has a short rotation, and it's just, this is not the playoffs. Like, you got guys who can play. Here we go. Lack of minutes for Ricky Castle has been frustrating, but, yeah, the Sixers team is a bottom five team in the league. All right, let's, without- let's, let's, let's play devil's advocate for a second. Just Here we go. Right now, I, it's like, Pat, I feel like if you were, like, you and Nick Nurse are the same job right now. It'd be like your boss handing you two screwdrivers and telling you to dig a ditch. Like, like that's pretty what, much. That's kind of like pretty much. Like that's what I feel like he's 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 do he's got there. And let's play devil's advocate. If Ricky Council got more minutes, does this team have a higher chance of winning? I want to hear a better chance of winning. Do they have a higher chance of winning with Ricky Council in? Yeah. Yes. You think there could be the different swing of three or more games won? If Ricky Cancel had more because his team looks cooked without a I'm they're just, cooked, period. They don't have there's they have too many pieces on the injury reserve. The biggest just, piece right now is Embiid. Right. I mean, uh, listen, what I think the Sixers could have stayed afloat if they would have had a healthy Melton, a healthy Roko. Yeah. I, I think they could have stayed exactly afloat. Healthy, uh, Tobias Harris. Harris. Yeah. I mean, come on, dude. You got it's Maxi, and that's it. It's Maxi and, and, and four is, guys from 7 Eleven. And any, any half decent team, I don't even have to be a mediocre team, just plays a half uh, defense on, on put, focus their defense on Maxi. The rest of the guys will just, you know, sometimes off good nights. Yeah, but that's. Even though Papa has his moments, like, <clears throat> very few and far between, not enough to win your games. I like Ricky Castle, like the next guy. I would love to see him get more minutes, but he is not going to be the difference maker. No, but I mean, again, if he, again, stretches out the, expands the rotations. Go to, uh, you know, he, what do you give him? I'm just saying, you don't think Nick Nurse is smart enough to know? That no, he, because he's not. He, he only gave him about do you, ever, do you ever think maybe, just maybe, like if we put Ricky Council in here, all we're going to do is hurt and stunt his growth. 
No. That makes, makes no sense. How does that make sense? Because Pat wants to throw everything to the Wolves. Because Get him like, out there. If he's on the bench, make him play. Give this guy a yeah. screwdriver. See? Give me the two uh, screwdrivers. It, Matter of fact, give me the star shape one too. I'll get the dish <laughs> built faster. Jesus, God, Pat, I love yeah, you. But listen, the, the last ten minutes of that Suns game, he didn't go to his bed. He, he didn't. He no, the Suns are here and the Sixers are here right now, man. Come on, I don't care. Like it was Maxi against five All Stars. Like, come it, on. The Suns had 21 rebounds after the first quarter against us. This team issues goes by. Yes, they have injured. nobody under the basket willing to body up anybody. And when you Kelly have, Oubre when gets you have, the rebounds. I like, listen, I love Kelly Oubre, but he is not the kind of defender that you need. Yeah, where's he at? Where's he at on and the beat, offensive side? Beat, offense, I mean, I, Mike, he's been putting up productivity. He's been up on like 20 plus games. 20 plus points. Yes. Right. When your star is out, you need a guy like him. He's got to go 25 30, dude. This is what I'm saying. Like, it, it's been the Tyrese Maxey show and four guys from 7 Eleven. Yeah. I mean, listen, Kelly Hooper has been at least showing you productivity. Guys who've done he can do a hell well, of a dunk. They, I've yeah. seen quite a dunk, dunk they, highlights they from him. They have been in games against good teams, but just not enough to get him over the top. Like, and it just goes to show you how much of an indeed is a difference. Missing a big key player like Embiid allows things like 21 rebounds. Yes. Nobody's getting 21 rebounds in the first quarter with Joel Embiid on the court. It's just not happening. No, I mean, the problem with Embiid is he can't stay on the court. Right. Like, I'm sorry. This is every year with him, and this is why I wanted to get but rid that, of him. That's, this is the catch-22 because <laughs> – Is Buddy like, healed hurt? <laughs> right. If my man's on a milk carton. For somebody who, like, we've been clamoring to get here, like, yeah, my man's been – but Buddy Hill's not a guy. He's not the guy. He's a guy. Right. But that, like There's I said, a difference there. Like, but that's that, like, what I think is like, he is. If the Sixers are a damn if you do, damn if you don't. If you get rid of Joe Embiid, fine. You're you're probably getting a lot, you know, getting a lot of healthy players. The problem is when Joe Embiid is on the floor, he's the best play, basketball player in the NBA because of the stuff he could do. He could draw the three on one defenders. He can find guys. A lot of guys are getting, creating space, getting in the, the open problem, spots. The problem with Embiid is Jim's right. I mean, look at here, Jim. With Joe Embiid this year, they beat Boston, Denver, Wolves, oh, Suns. Suns, Lakers, and OKC. The 700, 750 win percentage. Yes, I agree. Thank I mean, you. They, yeah, they did. But I mean, but that's the difference. Like, look at they 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 lost to the Suns. They... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh, more sense. Awesome. Oh man, he is health. He, the, <clears throat> the key the whole <clears throat> time. I mean, this dude never stays healthy. Like, that's my biggest. And it's always oh, freak things with him. It is. Like I told you, he's the only dude I know that broke his face twice. <laughs> like, how do you break your face twice? Like, all of us can live our lives and never break our face You're twice. I mean, Pat breaks his basketball. face every Saturday Look in the night. Mirror. <laughs> but but, but my, my, my thing is, like, 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 take the Suns game. Like, all these games, they, they hang in there now. Do some of the teams let them hang in there? Because they have guys like Kelly Oubre and Max who are giving the effort. Um, even Buddy he or Heal, what he is. But Buddy Heal wasn't going to be a guy who was going to come in here and be a superstar. We don't. He's not a superstar. He's a star. Not a superstar. Right. Not a. He's just a guy who is going to be complementary to this team as a whole. But yeah. when you subtract a portion of your team like Joel Embiid, it's it's Buddy Hill. Five Buddy Hills they're going to fill that gap. And it's, uh, but I'm just saying these late games that have been going on, they've had opportunities to win them. But again, they they ran out of fuel because of Nick Nurse not so able let me to. Let ask you this question: You're a team. You're a coach. Coaching against the Sixers at this current point, right now. Right. Oh shit! The Sixers are kind of coming back. It's a close game, a five point swing, three minutes left in the in the game. What do you do? What do you, Mike? I'll start with you. What do you do right now? You're locking down Ubre and Maxi. Okay, Pat. What are you doing? You're not again. You're just gonna. They'll shoot themselves in the foot because they're not gonna have the right. No, nah, he's wrong. No, they're not gonna shoot themselves. Mike's right. Why? Why? They're just locking down their two best players. And then you just got a bunch of what Scott so, like you said, like yeah. that's what they have. This team has a big drop off at that point. Joel, I almost forgot about Buddy Heel. Like, I mean, who's your center? Them. Who is your center on this team right now? Yeah, Mo, Mo, Mo Stank and Bama. You know, Kelly Oubre? Because he's you know, that's what you're telling me. Kelly no. Who's your best center right now? Center is Biden Harris. I mean, I'm over him. He's done. Well, I mean, he won't be here next year. Center, so that's all. No, I mean, if you're talking about star, 
it right now, I don't care if they pay me the league minimum. I don't want Tobias back. I don't so, think he will come back. But um, I don't think he wants to. I think after all this, listen, dude, we've been trying to trade him since we got him. So I, just, I think he's it's not even just that. I I think it just it, it, it is a blemish on the city how it came to be that he got the contract through us. I don't think he wants. I mean, I, I'm not saying he wouldn't want to be here. Maybe he has his his maybe his like, roots like, are in in the city, but. I just don't. I don't. I don't want. All I, all I know is he he I played the league minimum. I don't want him. I, I'll tell you this. I know he played a lot better when he came from the West Coast. Like when he was out in the West Coast, he played a hell of a lot better than he did. No, Sean, I agree with this. KJ Martin has played well. Um, ish. Like he he bodies in there. He's the only guy who bodies there more than Bo Bamba does. I'll give you that. Like he fights, but he's too small. Number one, and number two, he kind of kind of has his ups and downs on certain nights. But as a bench piece, KJ Martin would be great as a bench piece. But he's, you know, these guys are getting a lot more minutes than they, they would be if Joel and Beef here. And that's what this team has been missing for, since Andre Drummond. They have not had a center who can at least hold his own. And you know what, Paul Reed, I'm over you, bro. I am over you. You, you better watch yourself. At any given time, my man Nick is going to chime in from Twitter, and he is going to. Nick Nurse? No, Nick. Ugh. I forgot how to say his last name, but he is the biggest Paul Reed fan. He's I, he's going to get a tattoo of Paul Reed going across his knish. Oh, that dude needs to be. No, uh, I agree. I mean, like they should have let him sign. I'm not so sure. Hold on. Is the yes. one good game he has out of seventeen give you that one percent less? Like. I'm 109% sure he's the worst player in the NBA. How's a guy as young as he is, as tall as he is, and I wouldn't say he's not athletic. He's not the most athletic guy for as tall as he is, like, compared to, like, Embiid. But he's not, like, a lumbering. Yeah, he's not, like, a Manu Bowl. Yeah, like, <laughs> but he's just bad. Like, it's like he's every day. Like, what was that movie with uh, Adam Sandler and, and, and uh, what's this blonde girl's name? Whatever, where she woke, she had like amnesia. Oh, 51st uh, Days. 51st Days. She woke up every day and like couldn't remember who she was. Or, you know, didn't, didn't know who, yeah. Yeah. And like, I think that's how Mabamba feels about basketball. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's a shame. Like, uh, like, again, that Lakers game, 32 minutes for Kyle Lowry and the only five buckets. He struggled a little bit. I mean, he's been actually been playing a little bit better for the 76ers down the stretch. Um, but like I said, your bench is just incomplete right now. Just incomplete. Cameron Payne. Okay, no, now not. you just answered. No, no, no. No, you it's not. Answered. The bench is complete. The problem is the bench is starting. Yeah. No, but yeah, yeah. You Three just of the answered, bench players are starting, answered, bro. Yeah, you just answered your own question. Yeah, Kyle but, Lowry's old. Let's just throw it out there. Kyle Lowry's old. I love, yeah, I love Kyle Lowry when he was at Villanova. He's a good job for what he's been there since he's kind of got a couple weeks under his belt and playing with his team. He's done okay, but he's old. There's a reason why Miami he's let him retiring. go. retiring. They don't have Embiid here. I don't think he's sitting there going, oh, I'm going to win. I'm going to win right now. I'm going I'm to win this. I'm going to go out on top and win a championship. No, he's getting to play for Philly. It's a little farewell tour for him. Yeah. He, he, gets to play for, he gets to play for his well, hometown there's always, team. There's always that hope that Joe Embiid's going to be back here. Yes, Marshawn. This team is the worst collection of contract year players. <laughs> Again, he'll probably be back here by – play all time as a player for team. what for what so they can do the playing game and then he'll break his face for a third time he's gonna hit the trifecta you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, like come on dude like hey, you guys build you uh, guys I'm put sorry. too much hope on this yeah, dude. But, uh, you're yeah, that's your only hope like you're a gambler right yes oh i'm gambling right now i would rather yeah, well, roll my yeah. dice with mb than without mb yes so why? you're gonna get the what, same what, result what's a higher chance you getting a generational player as good as joel mb or Joel Embiid getting hurt again. There's a good chance Joel Embiid's getting hurt again. That's number one. Number no, two, I'm what did you win with him? You haven't gotten past the second round. So what's the big deal? This team has flux changed and brought in the wrong pieces. They finally started figuring out. In a year, they really didn't have to. This We all thought this was a gap year, a bridge year. Mm -hmm. We really did. I went into it thinking like that. Like, got to get some guys out of here. Devise his last con year contract. Maybe we could trade him at the, at the halfway through the season. Uh, Max, he's going to get a lot more time to start. We'll see how he grows and matures, which has been amazing. Yes. But, you know, Kelly Oubre is here. That's great. But, yeah, a bunch of guys, like 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 Marshawn just said, on a one-year contract. Or, yeah, it's fine. Oh, hold on. Yeah. And they were trying to get rid of the James Harden contract. That mistake. That's where it was. And they were able to find out the ingredients is actually working. 
but maybe we just add a little bit better ingredients. Doesn't have to be a superstar with superstar, just a star to complement, like Buddy Heald. But when you don't have Buddy Heald here, you've not seen Buddy Heald with and be. You've not seen the cake. It is like your wife putting the you know the flour and the egg and then you licking the batter. Guess what? It's gonna taste like shit. Not hey, really. Not really. Mouth. Yeah. yeah, not really. Uh, but anyway, so look, I, I understand both your arguments though. Like Dude. with you doing <laughs> with, with you out, I mean, I understand. Without Joel and B, this team is fried. There is no hope for it. I mean, and again, like you said, there is that optimistic. All right, let me see what he's like. With Buddy Heald, let me see who's on the free, on the floor with Buddy Heald, Tobias, and Maxi, and all you know, and a couple other guys. That's understand, and we now understand what he could do. But dot 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 with Mike though on his end. Get last year, you had a healthy Joel Embiid, healthy. In second round, what did James Harden? And what does guys do? Mike needs Joel healthy for a trade next <laughs> trade season. Damn, Skippy! Uh, what, I hear but, but, the Olympics, but, I might lose my freaking mind. But what happened last year? What happened? You had a healthy Joel Embiid and a healthy James Harden. They did nothing. They were invisible. He got blamed. <laughs> That's why he was already looking to get out of here this summer. That's why he made that little video of him possibly, you know, leaving Philly. Who? Joel Embiid. Remember the su- summer he said, "I'm giving Philly a window." Yeah. And yeah. So, so uh, yeah, but superstars he, say that that is a way of getting. Yeah, but what they it, want. if he can only. Like Mike said, you had a full healthy. See ya. You had a I'll full. I'm the airport. You were game six against that Boston team. Game seven. Guess what? Where yeah, were game, you? You had game six here in your building. And Hand you it to you. And you could not put. You and could, you let it slip off your fingers. You let, it, you let them come back. And then should you didn't we, show up. Should we trade up. Bryce Harper? No. We had game six and seven in our. Probably. Back think about That's it. That's a different. different think about sport. it. He, he has some bad swings himself. Sorry he to had think some about bad that. swings. I mean, but. Yeah. I'm, but Bryce Harper's gotten to a championship. Has Joel? Jim saying JJ and Curry had their best seasons with Joel on the court. Joel is not the issue. Others must step up. Harris, Melton, Simmons. That's my point. And, and, and I think Marshall just said the other point. This is the deepest bench they've had. Yeah, the deepest bench in Joel's tenure. Because that was it. For how many years this team was able to get to that second round and fall off? And they had five good players, and then they had Nobody. eight or nine other players behind them that were just just went from Top tier to seven eleven guys as Mike is looking. Right. I mean listen, I, I listen, I, I I get your point with that out going previous years, but it's still it's still the same. Like it doesn't matter. No matter how they try to upgrade this, their ending point has been the same spot. Mm-hmm. The the bench has gotten better every year. They still end up in the same spot. And beat still gets hurt. I mean, if, if not even hurt, but like I said, last year. I mean, year, dude, he would have been he would have been MVP three last, years in a row. Last year, he was healthy and did nothing for Well, him. he should have been MVP the year before. He was MVP yes. last year, and he could have been. He and most likely would have been, been MVP, MVP this, this year. year. That's what I'm saying. It would have been three years in a row he would have been MVP. Listen, I don't want to trade Joel and B, but it makes sense for the Sixers. This dude is not going to get them over the hump. If he comes back and plays this year, you think this team is really going to get past the second round? If if he's if he's healthy, maybe yeah. He's not going to be healthy though. But I'm just saying, you're as if he comes if he back. comes back and plays, he's going to be at best seventy five percent. Marshawn's actually probably one hundred percent correct on. He's probably trying to be <laughs> funny. <laughs> if the Phillies and Eagles won their championship two years ago, we would not care about the Sixers. Probably no, right. I mean, I would say we wouldn't care. We'd probably have higher expectations. We're like that. Yeah, we would be uh, holding them like. Yeah. Sally, their best shot was probably the year Kawhi hit that game winner. Yes. Probably. Yes. At this point right now. That's what it looks uh, like. Will was- won his first title, age 30, Doc 32. Um, Dude, and B's going to retire by the time he's 30. Probably. But uh, listen, yeah, they, well, they got. Uh, hold on. And, and, but, what I worry about, the, I, I've already written off this year. And I think the Sixers should. I do not want to see Joel Embiid on the court this year. Why? You've been saying that. Let him get healthy. But like, it's just not the year. It's not going to happen. But there's never a neg- there's never a healthy year sorry, with him. I'm not. I am. I'm going negative. I am Maddie B negative right now. That's I'm, fine. I am thrown out there. This team isn't ready because let's play. He is probably not coming back for another week or two, right? At the very least, before he sees any time on the court. It's a couple weeks of him getting that rust off him, which we know is going to take time. He has not played with Buddy Heald. He has not played with Kyle Lowry. 
What does right. that mean? It, it, it's, it's a whole new dynamic. Have you just stick you on a team and you think the freaking chemistry he can, comes about? No. He's a dead rush of peace. Don't dab to him. Men's restriction or not, don't uh, be better with him on the floor. I should have been P, oh. P versus A today. Uh, I'm, yeah, M's out. Yeah. No, this team <laughs> is not ready. It, They're not going nowhere. Be dude. healthy. You're telling me it's worth risking a guy who Mike just said not too long ago is injured over the flukiest things all the time for – most likely a meaningless run because you're gonna have to go into play. How do you know it's gonna be a meaningless run? He goes run. into a player and busts his other knee. Who is that Pat? Is it worth it then, Pat Bernard? Yes, it is. Time. Yes, it is. It's the seventh day this season. You the have a better. Wait, 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 hold on. You got a better. You got a deeper. Uh, I can't even get the words. You got a better team. You have Harris. You got Mo, uh, Lowry. Oh. You got Maxi. You got Ubre. You have Batoon. You have Kenny Ooh. Ping. Nick Batoon. All guys five years ago would have been great to have on my team. <laughs> uh, they're better now. You bring them in here. You have them play. You got two yeah. or three guys. Oh my God, dude, this is great. I'm just like watching Wilmington yeah. back and forth. You got two or three guys who are one foot in the retirement, right? Right? It's who? They pass their bedtime before they play any West Coast games. <laughs> who? You got to feed Kyle Lowry his freaking applesauce. If you I get mean, rid- <laughs> This is, I'm telling you, it is maddening to think. That the, we think the Flyers have a better chance of winning a championship this year. I am saying it right now. The Flyers have a higher chance. And you know what? Fine. No, you don't. Wrong. If I'm wrong and we're walking down Broad Street with a Sixers championship, you can go back and play this show. Yes. If, if, uh, on yes. I don't care. But right now, you yes. can't prove to me that this team is going anywhere. If you get Joel and Bede back, they will go somewhere. I promise. Yes, they will yeah, go to the to second round. Ra- they will go to the second no. round and get exited again. That's yeah. where they're going to go. With they're, Joel Embiid, a healthy Joel Embiid, they are the best they team are in not, the East. They are the best. <laughs> they're they're look, the best look, team in the East. Read your man dives right there. With it. There is zero question that the Flyers have a better chance of winning the championship this year. And that's Mr. Sixer. Oh, um, so I don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. As far as I agree with us, two championships, we, we would have been beyond yeah, right our yeah, yeah, we would have. We've so, been looking at Dallas going. You guys still have the court team? This year, they have the best record and beat every good team, even Denver. Thank uh, you. Uh, agreed. But that team has. He had, lost it. I'm sorry. He lost to Boston, too, didn't he? Yeah, but yeah. but my point is, they have not played. He's not played since what? This Jan- December. No, January. He's not played since the end of January. Right. Okay. So if he's. We all know about conditioning with Joel. Yes. It's going to take time for him to get back into it. Yeah, he's on Shirley Temple, the milkshakes out. Right? Uh, even that, even no. if he stays like super healthy, like being in all honesty, it's going to take time for him to get back in game shape. And the playoffs, as anybody knows, is a different beast. All right. It is heavier. It is harder. It is running more. It is a completely different than what they're doing now. They're going to have to go probably through the play in right now. They okay. are. They're in the play-in right now. The fact that the 10 and 11 spot on the, in the uh, East Ow. is so far dropped off, it does the Sixers actually a disservice. This team should not play in the playoffs with Joel and B because they are that injured. They are that unready for it. And outside of a miracle, totally they're disagree. Not, oh my, well, good because that just makes you look dumb. No, but it so, does not no, make right me look right, dumb. Right now, they would be playing the Bulls. They would be playing the Bulls okay. right now. If you get Joel Embiid on no, men's restrictions. No, Marshawn, no. Healthy Joel Embiid beating the Celtics or Bucks, because that's who most likely you're going to play. Yes, yes. In the first round, with a healthy Joel Embiid, yes, they do. Man. Yes, they do. Woo. What was that ganja you were smoking before you gave me it's a not, if You need to share with the rest of us. They wouldn't beat them in a healthy Joel Embiid with this lineup. With a buddy. They are not. Beating the Celtics. Yeah, they're, they're, not, won't, they're, they're not, not beating the Celtics. Yes, they are. No, they're not. And no. beats one and one against Maddie the Celtics B, this year. You're nuts. I'm benching them. <laughs> How? My man is under sleep, under deprived, or something because you are definitely. How they are? They, they are not beating the Boston Celtics. Yes, they State. are. Jim, they th- did it all year. I am not talking. You can't compare last year to this year. They took them to game seven. Absolutely. Thank you, Jim. But that was James Harden and them. Playing together for the most part. Yes, he missed a little time in that first series because they had a give me series against the Brooklyn freaking Nets. Who you could have, I could have started that game and probably won for them. Like, so they got there and then they got to the Celtics and then they just, they, the chemistry didn't work. Just didn't, it fell apart. And James Harden chokes. 
choke artist galore. So you can't look at that. They went there last year, took them to game seven. I think the Celtics are a better team than they were last year, and we are a worse team than we are no, last not. year. No, we're not. Even with Joel coming back, he will not be ready. Al, he makes everybody better. He'll take the three and ones. Those guys, Buddy Hill's a better perimeter shooter. Is he not? Is he not better a, a better perimeter than shooter who? Than, than what we had last year? But yeah, but a lot of people were better than I mean, we were last year. No, so what does that mean but, one perimeter? Shooter no, you got one perimeter makes a difference. You got Kelly Oubre who can cut to the rim. You have a Maxi who's who can his pull backs. He, you know that's a problem. That's going to be a problem for NBA teams. I'm telling you, I'm be not better. sitting there saying they wouldn't win a game. No, they're they not beat. winning the championship, and you they would beat the. And I'm talking series. about the percentage. The percentage of possibility of Joel B re-injuring what's been fixed just to put and they got a better head coach, a long shot playoff run. Yes, and they got a better head coach. Jeez, thank God you're not the president sitting there with the finger by the red button. (laughs) I would have nuked Idaho by that. I mean, oh, I, I just gotta tell you. I mean, I'm just trying to open your eyes. You're just so negative anymore. Oh, my eyes are open. Trust no, me. open. It's this my nose trying pre- to pinch because all the S you're starting to sling around here. <laughs> I'm just trying. To, ah. come on, man. They're a better team. If with a, with a healthy Joel Embiid, they are a better team. Dude, gotta, you are on crack. I'm looking at this right here, right now. They're three and one. Boston's three and one against Sixers. Not, three and one. The only time the Sixers beat the Celtics. Was the back first, on November eighth. Yeah, the they game. beat them one hundred six, one hundred three. Since then, it's been one seventeen, one hundred seven. Boston. What was the date? Uh, the first one. All right, better yet, we'll look at hold the lineup. On, hold on, I'm looking right now. Hold on, first, first meeting. Um, the Sixers won one hundred three, one one. They won one hundred six, one hundred three. They played again seven days later. Boston won one seventeen, one hundred seven. And then we go to December, January, February. <laughs> at Philadelphia, 117, yeah, 117, you're about- hold on, 117, 99. Then there was another one in between where the Sixers got crushed. They lost one, or they lost 125, 119. And what was, you said January, right? January, February? Yeah, all in yeah. that area. Yeah, days without Joel on beat. I mean, come on. Come on. Hold on. When the, the last one it was 117.99. Like that wasn't that was their last meeting. And that was at the end of uh, that was in February. February but, without Joel okay, Embiid. Oh, we without Joel Embiid. But the three games before that, they were two and one. And the one game they weren't even in. They're better we're dumped. Like, no, dude. Marshawn, this is this is your home. Eye is beyond open. <laughs> Um, all right, well, listen. Right. Uh, Your homerism uh, was uh, lovely this uh, morning. Yeah, and then here, here you go. We got Mike here, uh, Papa Dick Tyree. I, I'm with Thank Pat. you. There's Thank no you. one, two, three seed that team wants to face the Sixers. Come on. If there's a six, seven, eight seed in the first round and healthy. Now healthy, now healthy meaning Joel and B. Thank now, you. Listen, I am not disagreeing with the fact if you, as a team, one or two, you don't want to go up against the Sixers because that's a big first round. You know, it's not kind of a workup round. I get that. I'm agreeing I'm with I'm just that. talking about Boston. I'm not saying that's being easy. But to believe that they're going to win this whole thing, you're out of your freaking goal. Why? Why? Do I mean, what, what these guys do hey, average? You know, guys, there's a better chance how he drafts a linebacker in the first <laughs> round of the Sixers getting past the second round this year. Wow. Thank you. Well, listen. If somebody agrees with us. Listen, so one and one, one versus Boston. Listen, you I don't care. The Sixers are one and three. We could we could debate about this all day long. It's a master debate. <laughs> Hello, hey, uh, buddy. I was off the bench. Uh, wasn't an off the bench player when he was in Indiana. This team is is a play in tournament at best. They're just gonna they're gonna nowhere. They're not gonna go anywhere without the big man. If the big man comes back, Dave. We're all agreeing on, that man. I think of no Joel and B. This team is yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, not yeah. going anywhere. Well, let's say, but even with Joel, I mean, the time, it's just, the timing sucks. It just really does suck. It's unfortunate the timing sucks. If he comes back, it's the perfect you have a time. whole new team. You traded away half your team. What does that mean? Coming back into a whole new team. When you do don't need him to jail. What do you mean? You don't need him to jail. They're gonna practice in the. You don't. He's a generational talent. You just said it. Hey guys, guys, Coach Bernard over here <laughs> telling me that this team doesn't need the gel. Are you kidding me? They don't need to. They got generational talent. He's going to make everyone on the floor if better. If that was true, they would have three freaking three rings. They have now. three rings by now. He's such a generational talent that he ends up breaking a toenail and being <laughs> out for six months. It's not his fault. 
Freak things happen to him. Yeah, I it's know. A, it's a, only him. Only him. It's like, okay. I mean, it happens. It's I, like freaky things happen to guys. I don't know. I don't remember seeing a Greek freak out like this. I mean, I'm just saying, you know. He can't do half Listen, the things that Joel Embiid uh, can do. Uh, You're nuts. Here's Jim Dorsey. Yeah, check what do you mean I'm nuts? A Explain. Health, a healthy Embiid gives him a much higher chance of winning. Huh. Nobody's disagreeing with that. Yeah. But right now, this team is new team to him. There's no gel with it. He don't he, know how to he, play he, with Buddy Hill. He has rust to break off. He he's supposed to do all that with a couple weeks of season. Like, yes. No way. Yes, tournament. he's going to go on the run. It's going to be magical. Oh, Enjoy God. it. And the little, little fairy's going to come down and leave money under your pillow when you knock your teeth <laughs> out. Yes. Oh, it's happened. I woke up with... Pat, I got some land to sell you. It's Florida. And, 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 yeah, and where do you get? And where do you seaside land to sell you? In and where do you guys tell me that the Greek freak is better than Joel Embiid? Where? Uh, the fact that he has probably as much uh, MVPs and an M- and a championship. Ah, come on! He's got some Joel. Don't he got a championship? He played three finals. Talent wise. He's not oh, as good as Joel Come Embiid. on, stop. Don't homer this up, Pat. He's no, I'm not homer. I'm being for real. No, come on, stop. He, he can uh, stop. This dude, look at his, look at him. He. All you have to do is look at the time they spent on the IR. Look how long <laughs> the, the, Joel Embiid is well, well beyond uh, yes, thank spending you. the time Jim, on, Jim, on. I agree with everything you're saying. Yes, he's one of the top scorers in the NBA. Thank but. You're telling me you think he can be that Joel Embiid like that? Just a flick of the switch, like yeah. he's not, he hasn't done it for a while. Doesn't it's talent, Al? Then why do we even have? A, why do we have postseason, preseason games? Why, why, talent. Why, why is it when a game listen, when listen, team doesn't start off? I'm just waiting to see the Ric Flair fall right <laughs> on the face. You know, as soon as this playoff season starts, this is going to be Pat. Guys, I kind of told you that uh, this team wasn't ready to go. Uh, Number one player uh, in the league, 36 points. He averages 36. Did he not just average 70? Denial. That is still the senile stage of dream. <laughs> I think that denial. I think I think that is. I don't think you needed to fix that. I think he is in a senile stage. Ugh. I mean, this guy averages almost 70 points a game, 50. And it, and what's just called uh, the Greek freak can't even do that. Stop. But anyways, let's let's transition over to our beloved Phillies. Because it's time. We are less than, what, what are we, five days away or something? Yes. From five opening days, day yeah. baseball. I will be there, baby. Yeah, but you know what's not? It's, uh, the only, I'll tell you right now, real quick. I didn't mention something. We all need to calm down for a minute. Take a breath. Calm down. Put your mouth on something. Maybe get away from it all for a second. Maybe go to phillysportstrips.com. Set up a trip. Maybe this amazing Brazil trip. It's a week-long trip, guys. I'm not kidding. A week-long trip to Rio de Janeiro, San Paulo, for the game, and so much more. You can take in all the sights. It's an amazing time. It's a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go to South America, go to Brazil, and check out the birds first week of the season with a possibility of playing the Browns. Apparently, that might have been something that leaked out. We don't know. We'll find out. PhillySportsTrip.com. You're like, hey, maybe that's a little rich for my blood, or maybe you don't have the time to get away for a week. How about a day trip to Baltimore to watch the Phillies take on the Oilers in June? The oil, the Orioles, not the Oilers. <laughs> Jesus, man, Uh Maybe Pittsburgh in July. Boston, if you want to go up to that, that Ooh. wretched city. I'm just kidding. Boston in June. And Chicago, great place, Wrigley Field. Check it out. So many other trips, so many other options, internationally, nationally, around the corner. They got it. You name it. PhillySportsTrips.com. Um, well, listen, fellas, it is, like I said, we are five days away from Phillies and Braves. Open a day baseball here in Philadelphia and you know this is kind of again this is the time of year where I kind of want to go back of what Al what made you since you're the baseball guy in the room what made you a Phillies fan what what who was it your favorite baseball player uh that got you into Phillies baseball who was your hero who was my hero growing up growing up well I mean Mike Schmidt number one it had to be my my you know the people who made you, it definitely, I think, falls into family. A yeah. lot of times, my my grandfather, my uncles, big Phillies, Phillies sports fans, the Phillies, you know, that was the first thing that I really, I'll be honest with you, that really caught my eye was baseball. And uh, Mike Schmidt was just that guy, actually kind of vaguely a family friend as well. Um, and on top of the fact is, the 93 Phillies is really what turned it around for me. I was 10 years old. You know, I'm watching this team go to the glorious run. Guys of the likes of John Cruck, uh, Mickey Morandini, Darren Dalton, one of my mm-hmm. one of my favorite time, one of favorite all time. Um, 
you know, just those guys, like, you know, who epitomized Philly, I think did it for me uh, all together. Mike, I'll ask you the same question. Who was your childhood hero as a Philly? What got you into it? What was your favorite moment? Uh, older brother got me into it. Um, you know, my older brother and his dad, actually. They used to take mm-hmm. me to games all the time. Um, early on, I would say it was Schmitty. Um, you know, we always wanted to go, and you always hopefully got a chance to, um, you know, uh, going down to the vet on a, on a day like, you know, Sunday. Thanks, afternoon. Jim. Thanks, Jim. Um, you know, I don't know, man. It was just something. That, like, you bring up that 93 team out. Like, I was a, uh, I was a senior in high school when that uh, – I remember we – I was going into my senior year, I should say. Um, so, yeah, I remember uh, definitely going down. That season, I had some memorable games, man, that I that I attended. Uh, got grounded because I stayed out till 5 o'clock in the morning watching Mitch Mitch Williams hit a single off Trevor Hoffman mm-hmm. uh, against the Padres in a doubleheader. Who used to bring me to games? Ball, uh, uh, ballpark Franks. The free tickets in the back yes. in the package. Yes, yeah, used to go to those games a lot. You know what? It was really cool when uh, when you used to get the Philly Franks. They used to just give you two vouchers, and you could go to any game. Mm-hmm. But then they started printing the vouchers, and it was only for certain games, and it was always teams that were god awful. Oh yeah. Like I remember, we went down. I think one year we got a pack of the hot dogs, and I think when you looked on it. Three times it was the Rockies. And it yeah. was like, oh, man, like, dude, all right, are we either going to see the Rockies or the Expos? <laughs> yeah, I, like, like I said, I, I remember, like, you were, you were mentioning about, you know, again, it's it, to, to me, it was always me and my dad's bonding time. Just Phillies baseball, you're getting, you, like I said, you hear the crack of the bat, you know, the lawnmower, you know, the lawnmower starting to go off with the neighbors. And it's just a time where you can just relax with a family member. Five, oh, the neighbors start barbecuing. <laughs> the, neighbors start, the neighbors are barbecuing. Uh, Dad, I'm going to go get a hot dog. Uh, sign, sign. That's like your ninth wiener. Can you please remove the wiener out your mouth? Uh, but, you know, go I to see the neighbors calling Pat, uh, Pat's family going, uh, your son needs to stop taking food off the grill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get that chubby little bastard. But, uh, Were yeah. you chubby kids, Pat? What's that? Yeah, I, me and my me and my friend Eddie look like the number ten walking around. He was skinny. I was like a big circle. But uh, I was gonna say for a guy who eats as much as you, you're like the smallest guy in this room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. So again, I uh, you look at a hot dog. We gained two pounds. This <laughs> dude throws them down his throat like it's a conveyor belt. <laughs> you know. So you know, like for me, it was always Darren Dalton. Darren Dalton was my guy growing up. Just loved the way he was sweet about it. And uh, like I said, Lenny Duck, Dice, where you you mentioned about that '93 team, and that's what kind of really. Got me loving this Phillies team. And again, just uh, any opportunity I got with me and my old man, we'd go to Johnny Hots in the you know, early in the afternoon, and then we'd shoot down to uh, to the vet and uh, catch some good Phillies baseball. Johnny and, uh, Hots is a good place. Yeah. Johnny yeah. Hots is a really good place, man. I, I, yes. I, I highly, if you're in the city, I'm sorry, Al. I know we don't give shameless plugs, but this place has got I probably, know. it's probably I got, my talk about place. It, it's, it's probably got the best hot sausage sandwiches yeah. in the city. Um, well, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta try this. It's, I gotta, it's, I'm it's you. right across from Penn Treaty Park, just north of the Sugar House Casino. Okay, on the left hand side, Johnny Hots. I strongly recommend it. Uh, they're open Saturday, so maybe we should all get together on a Saturday, take a trip up there. I didn't know. I thought it was only the no, Mondays. no, no. They have Saturday hours now. Yeah, so uh, nice. Johnny's uh, Johnny's son actually uh, works wait, wait, up wait, there. What time? What days are they only open? Uh, they're open from uh, like six to three. Uh, uh, Monday through Saturday. Oh, yeah. used to not be on the weekends. Though? No, they used to yeah. not be, but they, they started opening on the really? weekends now. So yeah, I'm it sorry. Like, it's 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 a staple up there, it, dude. And you remember, the, it was like a nice little hut. It was like the original shop, but now they got like an actual oh, shop shop. Yeah. So yeah, it was uh, like I said, a great place. But yeah, man, I, I love Philly's baseball. It was just a, a great passion. So Al, let me ask you, what was your favorite play that you saw live? Favorite play. Yeah, if there's a play that stood in your mind that you saw live, maybe for, you know, like I said, maybe a childhood, maybe it was recent. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I was at the World Series in 08. I mean, that's got to be up there with that with that triple play. Right. Remember the triple play in, in the game four, was it? Game three or four it was. Uh, Bruntley. Bruntley had the triple play. <clears throat> that was a live play. That was the most impressive thing I've ever seen. I was very lucky. I saw... Terry Mulholland's no hitter live. Okay, I was at. Oh yeah, 
I saw uh, the no hitter in the postseason too with Doc. It was against the. I went to the next. Was it the Reds game? <laughs> yeah, the Reds. The Reds. 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 Um, Doc. Yeah, I I I saw Terry Mohawen's uh, no hitter. Which, by the way, I'm going to let you know this now. That game was given away by Septa. Septa was giving out these passes, and look, it was in the shape of a baseball diamond. You got on the L for free, and when you got down there, you presented it at the ticket window, and you got a general mission ticket for free. So really? Terry Mulholland's game was basically given away by Septa. I had the ticket stub somewhere uh, I have saved, but I was at that game. I saw Mickey Morandini turn an unassisted triple play on a Sunday afternoon at the Vet. And last but not least, uh, I want to say I was there for Kevin Millwood's no-hitter. So I saw yeah, two I no-hitters yeah, live. What, what was that? What year was that? Oh, I want to <laughs> say 02. It was yeah, the first year. One. It was – I want to say, no, not 02. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, it might have been. I think it was the last year of the vet. He threw that no hitter. But yeah, it was it was kind of crazy. Um, you know, and it was just I, I've seen so many moments, man. Like I, I saw Andre Dawson, the great um outfielder, mainly with the Cubs and Expos. I saw him hit his four hundredth home run live. You know, it's just something that uh you know, I've seen a lot of baseball, man. Like, we used to go a lot. Right. Like I said, the 93 year, I was there for the tw- I was there for the Twilight doubleheader that took us into 5 o'clock in the morning. Yep. I told that story yep. on air. Uh, I went back three days later and saw a 20-inning game with the Dodgers on fireworks night. You know what I mean? So, it, it, like, that, just so many crazy things. I remember, you know, I was at the last game at the vet. You know what I mean? Watching that whole ceremony go down, man. And it was cool, man, seeing Tugger come out. And then, what, not even a month a month or so later, he passes away. So, yeah, you know, it's been uh, – I've been around on this earth a little bit longer than you guys. But, yeah, I've definitely seen a lot of more uh, – seen a lot of Philly stuff, man, yeah. a lot of Philly stuff. So, uh, real quick, I want to hit some things here. Um, uh, Jimmy has actually a question earlier. He goes, Harper's back an issue. As of right now, they said no. No. They're no. saying it's, it's, it's just a – Back spasm tweak. I mean, remember the guy played first base for a whole season, or almost very much. Um, and it, you know, new the new thing, the new position. I'm not really worried about. It. They don't seem worried about it. Uh, his uh, Jim saying his issue is center field hitting Turner, uh, D and Mike strike out high end pitchers. They they you will see in the playoffs. Oh, my issue is the center field hitting Turner's defense. Oh, uh, center field hitting comma Turner's D. Defense. And too many strikeouts. I mean, right now, actually, I was going to bring this up um, later, but right now they have the Phillies bullpen ranked as number one going into really? the season. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he does. Uh, my first true love was Jimmy Rollins. That's uh, Dives. Everyone loves uh, Jim Roll. saying, what's the new rule as a fast player that gets on base, steals, and makes contact? Are they are, – are why you got wit and he does not K? No, you got wit. I think honestly, I think they got wit. To be honest with you, because they didn't want another power hitter. They want a guy who's going to hit contact, contact, and that, that's what that's what burned them. And the, I keep pointing this out. Like the Phillies have out not outright set up, but that's what burned them in the, in the postseason. They just kept hitting, trying to swing to the fences, and, and yeah. the back said, "Well, we'll give them something to hit, but nothing they can hit over the fence." Right, you and know, you, and that's how they got to us. Those throw, they were just hitting those curveballs. But I think they also have, they have to have a light. Uh, a lot more contact hitting because you have a, I mean, you have a lot of speed in this team besides Schwartz. And I mean, uh, um, Cassianos is probably mediocre speed, but then Harper's got decent speed. Uh, Bohm's kind of luggish. Bohm's got, he's Rojas. got long legs. So he's got decent. He's not terrible. They got Rojas. Nice. You got Witt's got some speed. I got Turner with some speed behind him. Yeah. Pache. You, you he's got, got Pache. Speed. You got uh, Sosa. Sosa. Scott. Yeah, so you know, so I mean those guys all got wheels. You gotta learn about this team needs to learn to manufacture runs and just let the power bats come to them. Yes. Listen, if they do that, this team's going to be who Dave says Tug McGraw was for, you know, who was his guy, uh love number forty five. And listen, that's um Tug was such an icon in this city though. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you stop and think about it. You know, yeah, he pitched for the Phillies. Also pitched for the Mets too. A lot of people don't realize he was on that. He was on that '69 uh, Mets championship team too. Um, but you know, he uh, he also worked for Channel Six, so he did like sports coverage. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he would do wacky stuff. Um, he was 
Just uh, that's right, Alice. You got, Alice was always a faithful in the fight. It's final. We'll be seeing yeah. plenty of him. Can't wait for baseball. Yes. Juan Rosa saying, that's a, I guess, whatever emoji. Strong. Didn't, didn't, yes. Didn't show up. Uh, Jim Dorsey, I was the uh, ESPN game versus New York. Oh, yeah, they when they killed, killed Bin Laden. Laden. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I remember watching that. I was yeah. actually watching that. I was, I was like, at, I was at, I was, I was, did I get that one? It was not. It was all I of a sudden. Everybody that one now. I'm trying to Everybody that. was chanting USA, and like nobody knew. Because well, I was like, remember, it was a year. Was, the cell phones didn't have Twitter and all yeah. that. Yeah. It's like we used to, but people were getting calls and texts from family. But the players were like the last people to know. know. Yeah. Because they're not having their phones. Did you ever see the 30 for 30 about that? Yeah. It was really yes. good. He got, he got emotional. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I remember me Pete and my buddy. Rose catching the ball with Bob Boone's glove in the World Series. Yeah. I remember being in an elevator at the vet. With Bob Boone in there. My brother was like, heck, is that Bob Boone? I was like, yeah. I, I was like four, dude, when yeah. Bob Boone played here. Like, I, I was like, okay. <laughs> the problem with the Phillies is still Robbie. Yeah, oh, but, you're uh, on that mountain. There you go. Juan uh, says he can't wait. There you go, Juan. There you go. Everyone's pumped up for the Phillies. The Phillies manufacturing runs comes down to the manager and his style of ball. We will all know that Robbie loves small ball. The other way is to generate runs instead of the long ball. Well, I mean, it, I listen, I'll, you know, I know we're getting to the end here. I would just mention this. Like, I agree with him that Rob Thompson has to be the one that says, all right, guys, you know, if, this, if it's there, swing for it, or certain guys swing for it, but guys, just get, get that ball in play. Like, right. just get the ball in play. I just, I remember one of my uh, close uh, recent moments I remember watching Phillies live was, of course, I went down to D.C. to watch Doc. Uh, I guess that's, and uh, man, I just, he was must watch TV for me. He was must watch. I mean, just the way he would just whip it again, uh, just, just terrific with the fastball. I mean, he was just. Like Doc said, was. He was nasty. I like I said, I went down to DC to watch him live, and of course, uh, big piece. His last, uh, it was like one of his last games as a Philly, and I, God rest his soul, I went down with Gus, and uh, we were just, you know, just chilled and uh, just went to watch him live. And Gus was very frustrated with me because I stole all his crab fries from. Uh, I was. I piece. was at the game with. The, was it the wow. Gene Rollins in the Parker? I was at that one. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. I was at the game. Um, I, I mean, if you want to even go recent, the JT one in the postseason two years ago. Yes. That was pretty amazing, too. I was at the game uh, right game. after we traded for Hunter Pence. And my seats were in right field. And Hunter Pence came running out. We had just gotten him from the Astros. And he came running out. And everybody started giving him, like, the ovation and everything. And he just looked and was like, whoa. <laughs> And uh, we'll, we'll go on this last comment here. Uh, Mike saying the nastiest pitcher ever he ever saw True. was Carlton in the slider. Absolutely. I'll tell you, you know who else was really good? He, he was a Philly for a little bit, too. Uh, was He was kind of locked down, though. When you brought him in, he was locked down. That was Steve Bedrosian. Mm -hmm. I remember him, man. Like We used to call him Bedrock mm -hmm. up here. And he was nasty. Uh, guys, here is the lineup for this week. And you'll notice in the lineup, we have some... Uh, Actually, is this the lineup? Oh, actually, I grabbed the wrong one. Hold on. Yeah, you did, because I was about to say. Yeah, that was last week. Yeah, pull it up. You big silly. Jesus. So. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Who, Mike, who's going to be your sleeper on this roster? Who's going to be? Who's going to have that bust-out year this year? Ranger Suarez. I think Ranger gets 15 wins this year. I think Johan shows that he is the center fielder of the future. I mean, as far as pitching-wise, okay. <laughs> Bench wise, you watch, you watch. It might is not be he, right is, away. Is he going to be a consistent I mean, bat? Right away. I, I, listen, I think people forget he was a consistent bat last year until the playoffs. He was batting over three hundred for as little as he played right. in as little time as he had up here. And, listen, and it's not going to be too between, big for him. It's not going to be too big for him this yeah, time. Yeah, that, same thing with Orion Kirkering. Like the moment got too big for that kid last year. He moved up throughout throughout the whole system in a year. You know what I mean? And then he's pitching in the in the postseason. Here, here's the lineup. Sorry, guys. But you'll notice that the Fightings final is on there. The Fightings final returns. So we'll have plenty of Phillies to talk about. We're going to be talking Phillies very shortly and releasing that for you guys as well. With um, Well, you ain't got no Fightings final on there for Sunday. I credit for on site? Oh, I got to fix that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Only reason I know is because I'm doing it Sunday. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll have all that up there, but uh, I have to update that. But also, don't forget the main Fightings final. The new Fightings final is brought to you. This <laughs> season three of Fightings final is brought to you by Streetlight Kitchen and Bar, 5400 Fern Boulevard, Drexel Hill, and the Holiday Inn and Suites at the Drexel Book Event Center. But we will be live there, so you guys can come out for some of you people chiming in. We, we, if you're local, we would love you to come on out, uh, hang out with us pre- and post-game. Watch the game with us. Tell us your thoughts and 
Maybe get your thoughts heard on air. We'll talk about it as well. And don't forget PM and AM prior to that. That's right. That's yeah, right. that's PM that's that's that's, we'll that's the uh, breakfast. Breakfast, yes. It's the, oh. uh, the the tiny cocktail wiener of the day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is, and I thought I was getting an easy day out. Yeah, an Thanks. Easy, an appetizer, but uh, we're coming to an the appetizer. end of the uh, Let's see. Um, real quick, I'm going to hit the last bit of these. Juan saying, put it up. Oh, no, we got that. Um, Bedrock, Dave's mentioned, is agreeing with you. Philly's lockdown closer. There's That's nothing with the idea. <laughs> uh, Ranger is a great pick. Uh, have a beautiful, blessed day, y'all. Juan, you as well. Juan, you too, buddy. We'll be seeing you a lot more. I mean, guys, if you haven't done it, hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, follow, and all that stuff. Yeah, we um, thank you guys, too, for tuning in. We're going to say early. We'll be, we'll be th- 300 plus this year. Ranger Suarez and Stott will be a throw. I was going to say, it's going to be batting, too. Um, so that is that. Yeah, so, Mike, I got to ask you, Flyers and Sixers A, uh, what is your meal of the day? Uh, I'm going to be watching some college basketball today, uh, you know, and then I'm going to move on to the Flyers. And then uh, my meal will probably be a stromboli. Only because oh. only because we ordered one yesterday and I still have another half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so. That's serving. That's, yeah. that's good economics. Well, listen, man, I'm, I'm kind of I'm working on the, the, the body here. So, you know, yeah. instead of eating, being a slob like you and eating a whole strong bowl. I, eat I, like, I just like putting a lot of large pieces of meat in my mouth. That's I don't know, big portions of it. Just on that note. <laughs> just gobble down. Blah, 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 what are you blah. having? Totally different. I'm just going to go totally different. Left field never had been done before. I'm just going to go baked ziti. So you're having pasta. I, do you guys not have pasta? Not poor, just poor on Monique, like she must look at this cabinet and just go, <laughs> "All right, might as well Sunday. just buy this maybe, maybe, Sunday." Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe if you if you brought in a little more bread to her, she could make you something else for one. I mean, for, <laughs> that, that, that's going by one Tuesday. day. I would actually we get excited if you said peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I mean, well, yeah, a, really. Well, yeah, different. man. You know what? I'm going to give her the Sunday off. You know, <laughs> let's just have lunch meat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, God forbid. No pasta, pasta. Yeah. Poor girl. Uh, this this cabinet's for Al. Sunday. This comes. What are you having? It's a very good question. I have not decided, but I might. Even though it's a little chilly, I might break out the barbecue. They got to do burgers and dogs. Yeah, or actually, and I chicken. might do some sausage and peppers on the grill. I've the, never I've had black. sausage and peppers on the grill. I had the Blackstone, so I can do that. Oh, you're lucky. Oh, yeah, man. I don't own one of those. Yeah. Oh, so so and then by the way, for all you Allen Market guys, NBA does have a great game today. They have OKC versus uh, Milwaukee, and for the NHL, you have Toronto and the Hurricanes. Yes. So uh, good, good, get good out of you know sports box. But yeah, listen, a lot, a lot of you know programs ahead with Edge of Philly Sports. We have the Clear the Ice today. We have uh, the Sixers post game show, and of course, all across all the time later today. And of course, that's every show that Pat's a part of. Um, <laughs> and we'll also be doing the uh, the uh, Fightings preview. Yes. So bring on the meat. Oh, uh, guys, just stay tuned. We're going to have a busy day here at EOP. So uh, for Pat Bernard and Al Safiri, I am Mike Laura. We will see you guys next week. <laughs>